Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. Time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. Well, last Thursday was Thanksgiving Day, and most of us realized that we had quite a bit to be thankful for. Even Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School. Yes, the holiday means a lot to me. First, it gives me an opportunity to relax and count my lack of blessings. And second, it offers a chance to catch up on several days' brooding. But this Thanksgiving was different. I knew it was going to be when I joined my landlady at breakfast last Wednesday morning. Good morning, Mrs. Davis. Did you have a nice night? Wonderful, Connie. I didn't sleep a wink. (laughs) That sounds like fun. (laughs) I was planning my menu for tomorrow. It's Thanksgiving, you know, and I wanted something special for Minerva and me. Minerva? (laughs) Oh, there you are, you cute little kitten. Where is she, Connie? taking my stocking off with her cute little paws. <laughs> Stop it, Minerva. Now get away from my stocking. Either get away from those or knit me a new pair with that ball of yarn you play with. <laughs> Go out to the kitchen, Minerva. I do want you to hear about tomorrow's menu. What are you having, Mrs. Davis? Minerva's favorite dish. S-Q-U-A-B. Meow, meow, meow. Good to spell things out anymore. I guess she's too old for that. Please go into the kitchen, Minerva. There's some milk out there. Meow. Right under the S I N K. Don't tell me she slammed the door behind her. No, no, that was me, Connie. I wanted to show you the squab I got for tomorrow. Oh, I'd like to see it. Well, here it is. Where? Oh, right there behind that carrot. It isn't very big, is it? I've seen stuffing with larger drumsticks. <laughs> you know, Connie, I was all ready to get a nice ten-pound turkey yesterday when the clerk at the market said something that made me change my mind. What did he say? Eight dollars and thirty cents. <laughs> well, that is a pretty rude remark. I'm afraid I was a little testy when I complained about the price. Anyway, when I demanded something cheaper, this is the bird he gave me. You certainly did. (laughs) Well, it'll be enough for Minerva and myself. I suppose you've already been invited somewhere for turkey and all the fixings. Where would you suggest? (laughs) Hasn't Mr. Boynton asked you out for Thanksgiving dinner, Connie? Not yet, Mrs. Davis, but this morning he's going to be exposed to the most thorough opportunity to do so. (laughs) Of course, Mr. Boynton's been on a very strict budget lately. He probably can't afford any turkey dinners. Then you bring him back here with you, Connie. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Mrs. Davis, but that squab... Uh, We'll make it do. Remember the old saying, there's always room for just one more. In this case, you must mean one more squab. (laughs) Well, thanks anyway, Mrs. Davis. After all, we've still got our health, which is more than I can say for that squab. (laughs) Of course, I'd rather see you eat a nice turkey dinner tomorrow. Maybe you could wangle yourself an invitation from one of your friends. Oh, please, Mrs. Davis... Oh, that must be Walter Denton. He's giving me a lift to school. Be right there, Walter. Why don't you find out what his folks are planning for tomorrow? Maybe you could get yourself invited there. I'm surprised at you, Mrs. Davis. Why, I'd never force myself on anyone in my life. Connie, take another look at that squab. Like I say, Walter's mother may not know it yet, but there's always room for just one more. <laughs> It certainly is nice weather for Thanksgiving, isn't it, Walter? It's more than nice, Miss Brooks. This air is absolutely succulent. It's downright savory and delicious. <laughs> One more crack like that and I'll be gnawing on the steering wheel. <laughs> Tell me, Walter, how do you usually spend Thanksgiving? Well, usually, Mom cooks a big turkey and we have dinner around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Gosh, I'll never forget last year's meal. First, we had a fresh fruit cup, then some delicious vegetable soup, and then this big golden brown turkey was served with a special dressing made out of chestnuts and raisins and stuff, and... (laughs) You want to hear the rest of it, Miss Brooks? Certainly. Just pass me a blotter and keep talking. (laughs) Well, I don't remember 
all the dishes that the hot mince pie was really tops. And my mom is just about the best cook in this town. And like most good cooks, she probably prepares more food than she really needs. Oh, sure. Oh, last year's turkey, the whole family had turkey, turkey giblets, turkey sandwiches, and turkey hash. That's because you didn't invite enough guests over for Thanksgiving dinner. You know, Walter, I've often thought that people who are so close to each other all year round should somehow manage to spend their holidays together as well. Uh, what kind of people are you talking about, Miss Brooks? Well, school teachers and students, for example. Who needs teachers on a holiday? <laughs> I mean, most teachers you get enough of during school hours. If present company accepted, of course. Well, you're a lot different, Miss Brooks. I know, I'm hungrier. <laughs> Look, Walter, about spending Thanksgiving together, if you're planning to be with your folks... Oh, but I'm not, Miss Brooks. Now, my mother and dad are going out of town for the weekend. It's my dad's first vacation in two years. How come you're not leaving town with them? It's my dad's first vacation in two years. <laughs> oh, he loves me, but he thinks I'm a little wearing in spots. So I'm staying over at Stretch Snodgrass's house until next week. Oh, I see. Then you'll have Thanksgiving dinner with Mr. and Mrs. Snodgrass. No, ma'am. They're going away with my folks. They're good friends, you know. Just like Stretch and me. But, Miss Brooks, I think your idea about spending Thanksgiving together is swell. You do? Sure. <laughs> then why don't you and Stretch and me have dinner tomorrow? Dinner? Well, that might be very nice, Walter. Oh, great. I... Then Stretch and I will be over to your place at three o'clock sharp. <laughs> My place? Well, yeah. That is, if you still want us. I wouldn't be without you. <laughs> but, Walter, Mrs. Davis did the shopping yesterday, and there just weren't any good-sized turkeys left that she could afford, so what she bought was a very Oh, what she small... bought isn't important, Miss Brooks. What counts is spending Thanksgiving with people who mean something to you. Gee, the Pilgrim certainly had it all over us modern characters. When a Pilgrim wanted to celebrate the holiday, he just picked up his musket and shot himself a turkey. At the current prices, Walter, the only way I'll have a turkey tomorrow is if I pick up a musket and shoot myself a butcher. <laughs> I just wanted to talk to you for a minute before your first class. Well, I'm glad you dropped in, Miss Brooks. I've got some rather exciting news this morning. I'll be glad to. I mean... <laughs> what, what is it, Mr. Barton? Well, do you remember the raffle ticket I bought last month in Marty's Malt Shop? Oh, on that green Adam hat with the red feather? <laughs> no, no, on a Tom Turkey. They had the drawing last night, and I won. Isn't that wonderful? That is what I call the coincidence of all time. Coincidence? Why do you think I stopped by your laboratory this morning? Well, I, I don't know. To invite you over for Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. <laughs> well, that is nice of you, Miss Brooks. I'll be happy to come over. About what time will you be expecting me? I'll be expecting you and Tom about noon. <laughs> Tom? Oh, oh, you mean the turkey. Well, I, I'm afraid he won't be with me, Miss Brooks. You see, at this, at this very moment, the turkey is on a train headed upstate. Why? Did he get fed up with our climate? <laughs> oh, I, I sent him up to my folks' place. Unfortunately, I couldn't afford to visit my parents this year, but, well, now they'll have something to remind them of me anyhow. Must be a very tall turkey. <laughs> uh, what did he weigh, Mr. Barton? Oh, about 18 pounds. Of course, <laughs> what I'd do with an 18-pound turkey, I'll never know. Until tomorrow. <laughs> well, I'd better be running along now. On second thought, you needn't get to the house until 3 or 3.30. On third thought, you can back out of the whole thing if you want to. Back out? I should say not. I'll be there, all right, and thanks for the invitation. You're welcome. But, Mr. Boynton, if you're expecting the conventional Thanksgiving Day dinner, you're liable to be a little disappointed. I'm just not having it. Oh, what are you having? So far, Walter Denton and Stretch Snodgrass... <laughs> Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Nettle Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. Eminent dental authorities supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate's right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. 
The group using Colgate Dental Cream as directed, using Colgate's exclusively, showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities, far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate as directed helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Yes, Colgate contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. So remember, always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Well, Thanksgiving Day arrived right on schedule, mostly because I couldn't do anything to stop it. After breakfast, I headed straight for the kitchen. There, I took a good look at Mrs. Davis's squab. Then I took an aspirin. <laughs> then I gave the squab an aspirin. <laughs> then I decided to make Mrs. Davis a full partner in my panic. Oh, this is terrible, Mrs. Davis. We can't possibly serve five people with this amount of food. Calm down, Connie. We'll make out some way. I've got cans of salmon in the house and some cheese and crackers and tidbits of one sort or another. But one doesn't serve tidbits for Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, I wish that bird looked bigger. Did you stuff him again since we last discussed it? <laughs> I've stuffed him five times since then, Connie. In fact, the last time I went to fill him up, I got the feeling that he was trying to kick my hand away. <laughs> No use, Mrs. Davis. It just won't work. I still think you should follow the advice I gave you yesterday, Connie, and get yourself invited out for a real turkey dinner. But I've already asked Mr. Boynton to join me. Then get him invited along with you. Well, what about Stretch Snodgrass and Walter Denton? Take them along, too. Why not? While we're at it, why don't you and Minerva join our happy little group? <laughs> We'd love to, Connie. Where are we going? <laughs> I don't know where you're going, but I'm going to take another aspirin. I'm sure the Conklins would like to have you over. I ran into Martha yesterday, and she told me that she was all ready to carve a huge turkey. Oh, is she fighting with Mr. Conklin again? <laughs> now, don't be silly, Connie. Martha even remarked yesterday that she was hoping Mr. Conklin would ask some of the teachers in to share their dinner. I can just picture that. If Mr. Conklin saw any teachers at his dinner table, he wouldn't know what to bite first. <laughs> that doesn't apply to Mr. Boynton, though. Osgood is quite fond of him. And he's also extremely taken with Stretch Snodgrass. Thinks he's the best athlete Madison's ever had. Well, what about his attitude toward me? Call anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Connie, pride goes before a fall. You've got to make a hit with Mr. Boynton. Here, I'll dial the number for Oh, you. but Mrs. Davis, Mr. Conklin can't stand the sight of Walter Dent. No, I, I know he doesn't. His daughter Harriet is Why? crazy about the boy. Hello? One moment, please. Miss Brooks is calling. You're coming. Oh, hello? Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. This is Harriet. Gee, I'm glad you called. You're having Walter Denton over for dinner, aren't you? That's the original plan, Harriet. I but wish I... we could all have dinner together, Miss Brooks. I was just talking to Mother about it this minute. You were? Well, now, that's funny. I, I wanted to talk to Mother about the same thing. Wonderful, Miss Brooks. Wait a minute. I'll put her on. Thanks, Harriet. Harriet and her mother were just talking about getting together for dinner, Mrs. Davis. Hello, Miss Brooks. Hello, Mrs. Conklin. Forgive me if I talk rather quietly, but Mr. Conklin's taking a nap in the living room. He needs the rest, you know. He's been rather irritable lately. I know, for the last five years. <laughs> <laughs> We've known each other for five years now, and, well, the reason I called... Harriet told me, Miss Brooks. I just know you feel exactly as we do, that people should share their Thanksgiving joy with their friends. That's right, Mrs. Conklin. You understand, though, that it isn't just me. I've already invited Walter, Stretch, and Mr. Boynton. The more the merrier, I always say. Well, I'm glad you always say that, Mrs. Conklin, because my little party lacks just one thing which you and only you can provide. What a beautiful way to put it. I can only say, Miss Brooks, that we'll be proud and happy to share Thanksgiving dinner with you and your friends. Well, thank you, Mrs. Conklin. Thank you, my dear. Harriet and Mr. Conklin and I will be at your place at 2 o'clock sharp. <laughs> 